we should try to avoid them. With this, thank you very much, sir. You are Sri Prakash Javdekar. Not present. Sri Thambi Durai. Sri Vivek Tanka. No, you have to speak from his seat. <laughs> and, and you are not on your seat. So I, actually, I had given. Actually, I had given up the hope. So that's why I was sitting with Mr. Simple. So I'm going to be very, very short, sir. Why should a distinguished lawyer like you give up hope? No, it's a question of time, sir. You see, uh, you wait till the judgment is pronounced. <laughs> you are in a very sound company of Kapil Sibalji. So you can't give up hope. <laughs> anyway, sir, what I'm going to say today is six hours is too short for a history of 75 years. The, the history starts with the Constituent Assembly sitting and deliberating over a document which was one of the most well-drafted document at that time, at that period of time, and continues to be so even today. Our constitution, I would say, is amongst the best in the world. It, it, uh, Brit UK didn't have a constitution. American constitution is a very short constitution. So this constitution served us so well. So that is why I say, Parliament is the voice of the people which it expresses through the Constitution and the Supreme Court is the voice of law. Now, the one good point is uh, that hundred, uh, roughly 105 constitutional amendments have happened, roughly. But in this history of 105 constitutional amendments, only one amendment has been struck down fully, that is the NGIC. <clears throat> Six or seven amendments were partially struck down or clarified. So the test of law has also been good for the purposes of testing the constitutional amendments, sir. Another thing I would like to say that it is very, very, it is, it is very uh, good to see a lot of lawyers in the constitution, sir, in, in the parliament, because if you, if you see even at the time of drafting... Vivekji, there are very distinguished lawyers here. They contribute from outside. On the floor of the house, I have analyzed their contribution is either by absence or silence. <laughs> and this is, this is a very painful scenario. And I have no difficulty in saying, because we have a distinguished legal luminary, Kapil Sibal here. Mr. Sibal knows it. On Monday and Friday, this house is not your priority. And therefore, I would particularly appeal to the fraternity to which I belonged, that please introspect and reflect. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> you see, regional consideration. <laughs> secondly, secondly, there is so much legal talent in the house of a global repute, which can enlighten the Supreme Court also as to what are the jurisdictional limits in separation of powers doctrine. Fact is that distinguished senior advocates are performing outside on television channels. Coming, coming to Dr. Singhvi, he was on a television channel, Kapilji, talking about parliamentary working. I immediately sent to the other person contribution of the gentleman for past 10 months. Now it is nearly here. <laughs> what he has done? Therefore, when a message came to me that Kapil Sibal wants to make a contribution, obviously I should have uh, uh, not taken a second and believing in the system as I do, and you know, precedence could have been given. I told my assistant, he was, looked at me like this. I said, let Mr. Kapil Sibal sit for some time. His presence here physically will send a good signal. <laughs> And that applied to you also. <laughs> Otherwise, make a speech and walk away. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I, I, I am so, spelling out my let, heart. Let, let me share that in these 75 years of glorious history, 
lawyers and non-lawyers, everybody has contributed in a very beautiful way, sir. Uh, and see the way all your laws, as I said, have been upheld by the Supreme Court out of 105 amendments to the Constitution. Only one was struck down fully, that is NJAC. But NJAC Supreme Court had its own uh, views on it, so I, I, would, I would not call it a truly... Uh, but one, one thing, and let me reveal my mind. You are a member of this house. Sir. Everyone here passed that bill only with the one abstention. Lok Sabha passed it unanimously. What has happened to that? Did this august house ever concern itself with what they have done? How can you countenance a scenario like this? It is prime obligation of everyone in this house that if this house has sanctified and by that majority, only one abstention, and Lok Sabha, total unanimity, 16 state assemblies endorsing it, and my very distinguished legal luminaries, they have to be on front foot. I await what Kapil Sibalji would say. <laughs> Go ahead, Vivekji. So your, name, your name signifies everything that you have. So let me... Let me, let me try and complete my, my speech, sir. Uh, so I'm now taking my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, the chairman and the house to another aspect, sir. Mm. I felt that there are three p issues which, which need your kind attention and which need the attention of this house, sir. One is that working days. Working days, a good parliament has at least 100 working days. UK has about 100, but it should be 100 plus. Our working days have been abysmally low and getting lower and lower by, by the year. And out of that also, I mean, I'm not a votary who supports... Uh, uh, disruption? Not disruption. Disturbing. I'm not, I'm not voter, I can never be a votary of this disruption because I believe in debate. But my point is, sir, that the three suggestions I'm making, that in UK, there, there, is, a, there is a tradition and a law no, which has now been given a, a shape of a rule that 20 days out of 100 days are allotted to the opposition to make the agenda. That means if I have 20 days in 100 days, I can't blame the ruling party. If I want a certain agenda to be discussed, it has to be discussed. And out of that 20 days, 17 days are given to the largest party, but we are many parties, and three days are given to the second largest party. Maybe we could think of this, it may stop or reduce disruption because if opposition parties have the authority or the right to also set the agenda of the day, they will bring the topics which they want to discuss, which otherwise the ruling party, party may not find uh, very compatible. Number two, I'm saying, sir, that there should be a rule that if 20, 10 to 20 percent of MPs want a motion to be discussed, it should be accepted. It, it is otherwise a very d demeaning thing that you give it in writing. 20 people are giving it in writing and we are not getting a discussion. Ultimately, what are we wanting? Only a discussion. So I feel that there, there it needs a review whether, whether if a certain percentage of MPs make a request, it should be ex accepted or not accepted, but I feel it should be accepted, sir. Third is, we, today a special a session of the parliament can only be summoned by the government. By the that is the law. In, in this country. But, in, but now, the, now uh, a lot of jurists have been saying, and it, it may get adopted in, in, in Europe very soon, that if 25 to 35 uh, percentage of MPs want a special session of a parliament for a special reason, it can get summoned. What I'm trying to say, sir, as we move into a new building, let us go for, for, for new thoughts. Let us go for new ways of dealing with problems that are going to face us or confront us very soon. It, it can't be a system where only the government decides. It should also not be a system where we only disrupt. It should be a system where we can also decide, they can also decide, and we can all try and work together, sir. Thank you, sir. Priyanka Chaturvedi.